Welcome to meeting number three for the Johnny Cake Ed Heights Elementary Capacity Relief Study. Um, tonight's meeting will involve members of the committee looking at several scenarios that have been created and really engage in a process within which they're able to deliberate and to have some conversations with the ultimate goal of bringing forward scenarios as a recommendation for the public session. Facilitating that process is Mr. Matt Cropper, our consultant. And so at this time, I'd like to turn it over to Mr. Cropper. Especially in uh, able to adapt to the, the weather uh, delay we had and have no date uh, this meeting. So we're glad we're all able to come back on a short notice. So our agenda tonight some new information, uh, new information, draft options. Um, we have two options that we uh, have prepared for you per work we did. So you worked on a four, developed fourth option at the last meeting. And uh, so we're going to be reviewing that. We have that. So we're going to small group exercise to determine the, the options that feel best meet the objective. Really, with the focus on uh, determining which options we want to take to public at uh, next public session. Uh, we're going to have a discussion with that small group. Small group exercise. You guys can discuss the large group as a whole, and then determine which options we want to take to public session. So just a little preview of the uh, a recap on the timeline. Here we are in meet three. See, we've, uh, this is where we are today. We've got our public information session next week, and then one more meeting after that. We're going to finalize uh, the recommendation uh, uh, within the school board. And then the school board will do their work uh, in May, finalize the decision in June. I wanted to review the boundary study objectives. Um, are the um, basically the, the 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 measures for success for for this process? So our goals are to provide capacity relief, Dogwood Elementary School, create viable and successful boundaries to effectualize capacity, support diversity among the schools that reflect the community in the school. Johnny Cake, you are correct. My apologies. Yes, yes, thank you. Uh, maintain the continuity of neighborhood. Uh, so looking at the considerations, uh, so this is uh, based on Rule 1280, the rules that we follow as we evaluate the uh, practicability of moving a line one way or the other. These include uh, maintain the continuity of neighborhood, maintaining or increasing the diversity among schools to reflect the diversity of the region, the impact of transportation and pedestrian patterns on Minimize the number of times individuals are reassigned and make efficient use of capacity in all affected schools. Also, long term enrollment past capital plan accounted for, considered. Examining the location of feeder school boundaries and continuity of pattern. Phasing in boundary changes by grade level for high schools. And additional things to consider are the geographic such as roads. Railroad, creek, major highway. So we have some follow up. Uh, we do, I think everybody should have picked up the pack. Uh, the pack front. I'm pretty sure you guys picked up this uh, information. Um, we have some follow up uh, to some questions that were asked last week. And these include um, can we have headcount numbers for the options? Um, and the answers, the, the response to this is full time equivalent or uh, off for F enrollment determines space for each option. And the FP enrollment factors 100% of students in grades fifth grade, 50% of schoolers start in because they are half day programs and have MMP. So they're held in the room. That's why the, that double count. Giving it more of a, a um, it relates to how the building is actually. Total headcount, head NF, those three 
burden people are provided on two nice option analysis. Other questions are uh, why are we making a plan for 2020 21 when numbers are going to uh, numbers fluctuate and things like that? And so while some of the numbers may change, trends indicate that the strategy by the would be consistent with what we don't anticipate age enrollment on the graphic done in this uh, enrollment projection. Efficient time is boundary and anticipate boundary process in other areas causes that conduct that time. This to have adequate time to make plans that are being made once the boundary is moved by the program moves state rate past So um, there are special programs Johnny that will relocate towards past that talk about this uh, at, at every time talk the the movement will reduce enrollment by the space past at the calculation for all options. 35 elements uh, to reflect the program move calculation for all options eight better capacity five nine five reflect version of special ed classroom as a result of of this um, of this uh, just program move a couple of notes that there have been um, there have been a lot of discussion that about Program move, um, and the decisions on a lot of the questions, uh, the question, where is the program go? To? A lot of speculation, and uncertainty about. That. Um, so the, the don't have where the go um, at this moment. Decisions are made in collaboration with a number of staff and offices, and they're at the discretion system. Um, consideration is given to the regional need path where, where to relocate the program to. And at this time, program moves are still in the planning stages. However, there are no plans at the site. So have that certain that the program is not going to but here the district is not uh, fully fine has not finalized where the See uh, the analysis that we have done uh, to account for program adjustment, as I have uh, indicated before. Johnny Cake currently 100 slides. Once that program adjustment is occurs, Johnny Cake Elementary is at 100. Um, that still does uh, indicate or um, suggest for Johnny Cake. Uh, and at height, we're at that opportunity uh, has been exploring over the course of the last year. So we have the draft option four based on the fact that we buy the uh, sketch that you made on the option map last year. Um, with that said, remember that every draft. And um, and really, what we don't want to do is we don't want to pick. Uh, we're not at the point where we can pick the best option. To make the recommendation at the point. We want to be able to uh, give the public provide input. Hear what the public um, as work. Um, so the uh, folks pick the best that open for our public for some of their exact should have eight and a half by eleven map packet, uh on the PowerPoint as well. The option map uh, option four is now live on the back app. Um, and then also copy all the materials available online at uh guess.org slash slash yes found on yes website. Looking at uh, uh, current 
surgical capacity are the options, the, the target numbers that capacity are working with as a result of uh, work that, that we discussed that incorporates just such a program. You have uh, the information on the, the pre and program post station, other that provided uh, the whole course of this, of this work inform you on how to calculate uh, data that up. Um, in the option tables now, there's option four that's included. Option four uh, shows you this particular table, total number of that's, uh, at the particular build for that option four. And then this shows you the utilization. Same data look at by how as a place past. Uh, you can see that um, look at the stall, all all four options. You know, every single first the option brought uh, had so far point have one school that's at a hundred or a little bit over a hundred. And the work we did at the last option four actually provides a very good balance. Um, uh, they're almost a perfect balance. I was encouraged that. The minority, that really is no, um, no impact on the minority as a result of the adjustment that, uh, that any particular option, option one and a little bit of a, uh, a little bit of what you are now by one either way. Impact table, option four does move second, second part and uh, op among all four options, but that uh, necessary in order to accomplish that very necessarily not not of but how the back oh lay out all four options. Feeder pattern adjustments uh, are really the same across all options. Um, is no um, uh, impact pattern as a result of work. Um, I some of the advantages of all the options. Last, I'm cap I also have developed some options for. So, uh, option one that does provide. Um, uh, by does not in fact this uh, does not provide the best balance. The best balance is now in option um, does uh, does bring Johnny Cake low one hundred. Um, it does it the areas are uh, all the areas that we are looking at are walking both, um, which uh, uh, walking across the side. The option. The where area that way uh, side road in the area would might avoid have walk across the side Johnny Cake for the go that is option twist numbers among the draft options option comes here uh, and carves out sort of the middle part of the current Johnny. Um, it's the advantage that all still walk cool, but Johnny Cake is still over 100. In option three, at height, yes, the percent. So for option four, the new option that you could draft, and as you recall, we did stop, started. Started with option one. Look at option one, you see all the way down to the planning block area. When I look at option four, what you did is you had moved this line up a little bit. This uh, area, the walk height. And these students right here have better close walk, Johnny. And but this area still is south side. 
don't have to cross over to the side. And, um, and then you move the line down to a couple of uh, planting blocks to give, give Johnny Cake adequate option. Um, so I, it looks like a, a, a strong option. It does move the uh, second most crop. Could limit the uh, according to the race impact for students other options, but you have to weigh in all the scenarios back look at uh, record. So we're going to perform two exercises to evaluate the options on, on uh, the options that will be public, public at the public session. Um, we want to identify common thoughts among team members and options in consideration of the boundary study. So what we have is um, have a, like a plot map that goes to the table shown here. See, there are four options that are listed. And then are the considerations. We have given a picture that shows um, red, yellow, and green. The red stickers are four. Yellow means fair. Well, what you want to do is like to place a sticker, evaluate shop, evaluate and if you feel like um, it does a good job of a, a, a well job of fishing past put a think does a poor job, put a red sort of a middle road, put yellow. And so then this will help kind of form you as a professional how the option size up as it relates to those. Um, They just work one one size half. I think we'll just have everybody work one group, have discussion, talk together, exercise together. But as you do this work, uh, think about it's gonna it's gonna be recording. We'll have somebody speak after one of you guys for input. Uh, give an understanding. as and um, as you're looking at this, working through it, uh, think about what are the strengths of the option. Are there any current challenges for improving the And um, if there are any new options, think about that as well. Um, and that's so. Do you have any questions about this exercise? Okay. I'll give you some time. And if you have any questions, we'll uh, we'll uh, regroup once once you guys are ready to discuss as a whole. Two, three, testing one, two, three, testing one, two, testing one, two, three, one, two, three, test one, two, three, two, three, two, three.
testing one, two, three. Testing. Testing. And you can see that. Uh, testing one, two, three. Test. Testing one, two, three. Testing one, two, three. Testing. Testing.
one, two, three. Testing one, two, three. Test. Testing one. <laughs> testing one, two, three. Testing one, two, three. Testing. Did you hear it in there?
Okay. I think uh, the group is ready to uh, to have a, a large discussion about a conversation. That so um, that said, Chris has a microphone. If you uh, microphone, whoever wants to kind of uh, share some thoughts, share with the uh, both direct size, we'll go from there. Okay, um, so we looked at the four options and we used the table to evaluate them. And in many cases, um, the criteria that we were using didn't distinguish the options from each other, but you'll see that in some cases they did. Um, the first criteria or consideration was efficient use of capacity in affected schools. And because we felt like they were all okay, um, but we thought option four was. The best it was green or nearly green yellow green mixture um, because they end up with the schools at 98 and 99 percent which we feel like is is probably the best case scenario um, capacity wise of all the options um, maintaining the continuity of the neighborhoods we liked options one and four best um, two and three we liked less because there were more crossing of single side for kids and we're, we're less excited about that um, and that is also reflected down here in this impact of transportation and pedestrian patterns on students. Um, same sort of issues. We like one in four, and we feel like that keeps the neighborhood together, keeps kids from crossing Ingleside, which seems to be a bit of a natural barrier, even though it's not natural. Um, maintaining or increasing the diversity among schools to reflect the diversity of the region. Um, according to the figures we got, um, you know, it's it, 93, 94, 95% minority in the schools. So kind of good across the board at maintaining that because no matter what you do, you're going to maintain that. But we made an asterisk just do we need to look at um, English language learners more closely and see if that population is going to be shifted or how, how the different options might affect them. We, we just brought that up as a question. Um, Long-term enrollment and capacity trends and future capital plans. We rated them all green. We're not really sure. I'm, we don't know of any um, future building plans in the area. It's a pretty built out area already. And continuity, continuity of feeder patterns. We gave them all green. Again, it doesn't really seem to affect the feeder pattern for middle or high too much. Um, can I? Yeah. That's okay. And we even looked at the maps and sort of um, thought, okay, do we need to think of another scenario or are we good with those? And the only other scenario we thought of, just kind of playing with it, um, we ruled out based on it would change some walkers to busers for the other school. And we were like, okay, we don't want to do that. So we like our options. We as a group like one and four. Want to add anything? Great. Good. Really informative. You, once you start down and looking at uh, you know, the results of the stickers, Colors, it kind of it helps inform you and size stuff. So it's really, really good. Really good. It uh, looks like a takeaway. Looks like there are pros and cons of shop, shop, but any of the four options are do have viability to them. Um, so, um, so what we'd like to do is um, determine which options we want to take to the public. Um, so it's not uncommon for us to take four options to the public, get put from them. Um, four options is probably either three to four options what we typically take to the public when we do these kind of processes across the country. Um, so it would be okay if you did decide to take all four to the public, get their input on all four options. That's something you certainly could consider. Um, but what we want to do is we want to determine which option to present to the public information session. Uh, remember, this isn't a vote support of an option or a recommendation, per se, but just really trying to determine which ones to take to the public. Um, uh, you know, negative feedback can be helpful in determining assumptions or eliminating options from consideration. So even if there is an option, we feel uh, we don't really like this option. We had mentioned two and, two and three. It's not, it may not hurt to get some input public uh, regarding those options, they may actually provide input that you may not have 
considered a So it certainly isn't harmful to do that. We will stress the public draft even at that point. Um, you have some uh, clickers for everybody to use to uh, determine which option to take. But uh, what are your what are your thoughts as a committee um, in terms of taking all four to the public or taking a smaller subset of options to the public? Um, do you, uh, does any of you as committee members were talking through it so strongly one way or the other? If people really don't like one option, I feel like that's valuable to know. And we might get information or opinions that we hadn't thought of. So, And I don't think four is too many to overwhelm people who are looking at options. That's right. Anybody else have any comments on that? Or that? So it seems like we do have some uh, the, the group there. There's no opposition to that, and I and I certainly don't disagree with you. I think that four is a good number to take to the public. It shows them a variety of scenarios that could be considered. That uh, the, and shows them the full body of work done up to date. So I think it certainly would be um, there's an advantage to that. Um, so, but what we, what we want to do is we want to make sure that there is full consensus or consensus among the group uh, in regarding to taking these options public and uh, for the public record uh, we, we do this and so everybody has a um, their do they have their active vote okay you have your active vote clicker so the question is all scenarios presented at tonight's meeting should be brought to the public information session if you believe the answer should be yes you click a if you, if you think that answer should be no you click B and then we could see when when everybody casts their vote, uh, for this answer, it shows up in yellow. So we do have every everybody has determined what the answer would be to this, and we do have 100% consensus on this. And so, um, <laughs> so we're really proud of work you guys do, and I'm really encouraged by you know the, you guys working the team dynamic that's here. It's really really good and encouraging. So what we will be doing is we will be preparing for this public information session. We'll be bringing all four scenarios to the public, and it's going to be uh, here at Woodlawn High School from 6 to 7 p.m. And um, what we'll do is we'll have copies of the map. So we'll have a set back here. I'm not sure if we'll have two or three sets, but we'll have a set back here, probably a set over here, and a set over on another side so that the public can spread out. Do have a, a large crowd, you know, bottleneck around map, and then we'll put these statistics all on one sheet, like a large plot size sheet about this size that has all those statistics on it as well. When you come to that public information session, you don't necessarily have to have your book with you because we'll be sort of, uh, we'll start the meeting with a presentation kind of like this, and then we'll invite the public to go look at the map, and you as committee members will be going and sort of standing around the map, having conversations with the public, and um, in talking with them about their concern. Um, there will be a survey that's, uh, that will be uh, posted as to accompany that, that uh, public information session. And the most important thing at that night's meeting is to encourage the public to participate in the survey and tell other people that they, they don't have to be at that meeting to participate in this process. So the survey will be up for a period of time for the, for the public to go online and they can tell us what they think about the four options, give us some feedback that we'll report back to you when we regroup. Do um, you have any questions about that, about, uh, about that meeting? Yes, sir. Hello? Thank you. I was just wondering, uh, what's, I know I understand it's a little late in the uh, process, but is there a reason why public information session was scheduled for here as opposed to Johnny Cake. I only ask in part because there's a lot of construction going on out there now, so it could be a little confusing for some people to find their access into the building, and Johnny Cake's about a mile from I was just wondering if that was, if there was a reason for here as opposed to um, We did select the venue out of familiarity uh, so that all the meetings were being held at the same place. Uh, parking was definitely a consideration, and to be prepared for that, we will have, um, we will have a traffic uh, 
uh, we have traffic compared to uh, direct people where to park. Um, um, so it's not so much a question, it's just um, something to consider. I know that when we talk about a program that is moving from Johnny Cake, um, the words that are used as a special education program, um, but I'm, I, I'm wondering, are we able to designate what it is so that our community is aware that we're not talking about students who have um, IEPs or receive special education services. We're talking about a specific program within our school. And because those numbers are not included in the overall numbers because it's two separate kind of accounting, I just want to make sure our community is aware of what we're discussing because it's a specific program. I don't want my community to think it means we're not having students that receive special education services anymore, yet the language that we're using here is a special education program. And so I just, you know, if people are going to vote on this, you know, that's not necessarily something they're voting on, but I just want to make sure my community understands what that means as opposed to thinking it meant well, my son or daughter has or, or receives special education services, does that mean they're moving? You know, I just want to make sure it's clear because the language, I know what you're talking about, but, you know, it's our school. So I will, um, we will do our best to explain the, 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 that phenomenon that's, that exists with this particular study with the program adjustment. I think that, um, We'll do our best to make that clear. I think that, well, I'm not sure if, I don't see, I don't know if, um, I'm not certain what the, what it, what that, what that program is. affects, you know, 40 kids, but they're not included in these numbers, but it does affect them and their families. So I, I feel almost as if it isn't as transparent as I'd like it to be because we're not naming what the program is. And so I feel like if we're going to, we should probably say this is what we're talking about in this move because those are the questions I'm getting at school and I'm not answering them to the best of my ability. So um, I just want to Thank you so much for that question. I think what we wanted to clarify was that we have, when we think about students special education services, there are a myriad of services. There are students that are receiving services that are part of a pullout special reading program. There are students that are receiving services for reading support, math support, and those students are included as part of the general education setting. What we're saying is that the specific regional programs that are assigned to Johnny K. Those are the programs under which right now we are, we are in the planning stages. We're taking a look at not only capacity, but also looking at regional needs. Those are the groups of students receiving services under that program would be the ones that And what we can probably do is work with you as part of the principal toolkit to make sure there's very clear consistent language so that your community knows exactly what we're from the So um so this will be next Wednesday, um February twenty seventh here at Woodlawn seven PM. Um if you could get here a little early at all possible I know that work traffic Add as said, um, it would hurt to get a little out, out, um, out, out, out. Um, most important that our so look at the map, look talk about at at it. Go up to a clarify a lot of. Clarify help what is it? 
no, this option moves this area to Edmonton Heights. This option moves this area to Edmonton Heights. That's not a problem, but what you'll be doing in the course of working with the public. But then further reinforcing the encouragement today, letting them know that that they don't now. And so other than that, other than the next week, just remember that our next committee meeting is April 3rd at 2 p.m. Uh, one final note is that next week we will not have dinner. So um, grab by Other questions? We let you all go home. So, what we present or what we agreed to present for Johnny is that going going to include regional program being moved? The, the, I I believe that that program adjustment is that's something that's not part of the committee's consideration. Okay. I think that is that is sort of a That's one like of the a second part. Yes. So so it's the program adjustment is one step to help provide relief, and then the secondary step is really the the uh, the bulk of the work that you're doing and trying to figure out how to get additional right. relief to okay. help. So then there is a chance that program not. Well, I mean, I think that when it gets to the board. Board to determine what they what they. Well, that's do. my question. Are we presenting to the board at the program? I believe that uh, that is a concept with uh, with with uh, with work that's being made by the committee. Uh, one the con one of the concepts is that the program program movement part of this will be part of the recommendation, regardless of it, what you do in terms of uh, additional strategy. Um, and then, but once that recommendation goes to the board, the board is what they want to approve. Just to the that. Okay. And for to provide relief, not It's it's a combination of both. So yes, it is two separate things, but they are they. But can they? Um. Well, if you as a committee feel like program adjustment alone provides enough relief, that's something that you as a committee can discuss, determine. Um. Well, I guess I'm asking a question because we want to keep our. Doctor Wheat Phillip. One of the decisions that is made at the system level is where a program should the take that we would have program moves. That's one of the strategies that we're utilizing to really increase space, not, I shouldn't say space, increase capacity at the school. The charge from this particular community committee is to make a decision given the fact that we will move 30 plus students. What are some other ways within which, in terms of the attendance areas, that we can provide additional relief? But the decision regarding the program moves is made at the system level, and that is what is part of this current planning process. Yeah, like I said, I just wanted to know if we're providing relief more than one way. Yes. Through program moves, but also through looking at the bound study process. Um, are there any other comments or questions uh, that you guys have this evening? Okay, well, we will see you next week at, uh, at uh, around 5.30 p.m., and uh, you guys have a good night, a good week, and we'll, we'll see you in about a week.